Former Massachusetts Governor Bill Weld says he's creating an exploratory committee for the Republican presidential nominee in 2020. Earlier in New Hampshire, Weld criticized the Trump administration and painted a dark picture for the U.S. I encourage those of you who are watching the current administration nervously but saying nothing to stand up and speak out when lines are crossed in dangerous ways. We cannot sit passively as our precious democracy slips quietly into darkness. Congress must do its duty, and as citizens, we must do ours. Weld recently joined the Republican Party. He ran as the vice presidential candidate as a libertarian in 2016. Joining us now from Boston, the Shearer Center, is a national, is national political reporter for the Boston Globe. And Michael Graham is a CBSN political contributor and conservative columnist. So, Shira, I want to start with you. Can you give us sort of sure. a little bit of background on, well, what type of a governor was he and why do you think he's choosing to run now? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for those of us who've been covering Weld and following his career, this is just another crazy turn in what seems like a whiplash-inducing <laughs> path. Um, Bill Weld was governor in the 90s here in Massachusetts. He was known very much as a moderate Republican during that time, at least for those times. Uh, he, stepped, he left it when he was nominated to be U.S. ambassador to Mexico. The Senate bucked that nomination, uh, he, but he was no longer governor. He ended up, at one point, running for governor of New York, a totally different different state before, as you pointed out, just pointed out, he ran on the libertarian ticket last time around. So, you know, he definitely has a history here in Massachusetts in the 90s, particularly. He was well regarded and popular for much of his term. But the last few years have definitely uh, left us looking in a lot of different directions in terms of his career and his path. <laughs> Michael, I hear you in my IFB laughing. I know right. Weld was a Republican, then a, then a libertarian. Now he's back to being a Republican. We know he supported President Obama in 2008 and 2012. Mm -hmm. Will Republican voters take him seriously? Yeah, that is the question. I spoke to pretty much every New Hampshire Republican consultant uh, that, that I'm familiar with, and none of them wanted to go on the record because they want to stay out of the primary, any possible primary at the time, but they, none of them said, yeah, Bill Weld is a serious contender for the nomination. And we can talk more about that in a second, but I think the consensus is that the danger he poses to Donald Trump, and he talked about this today at the event in New Hampshire, was that he might be the crack in the dam. And as uh, Weld said, if I gain traction and cracks start appearing, you might see a gold rush of candidates coming in. And so those are the two competing ideas. One is he encourages people to think about getting in. The other is that he diminishes the idea of Trump's, I mean, if, if Republicans figure out that the guys who run against Trump are people who endorsed Obama, then their attitude is that it, these, are, these aren't real Republicans. I'm not worried about them. I'm sticking with Trump. Does he hurt the cause? of a serious Republican challenger more than he helps it? That's the question. You know, when you look on the Democratic mm -hmm. side, Shira, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, who's also running for president, was asked about Weld today. I want to play for you what she said. I don't know much about him, but I'm not surprised that a Republican is challenging President Trump. He should be challenged. <laughs> so even if Weld isn't serious or treated as a serious challenger, could he still be a thorn in the side for President Trump? And does this help or hurt the Democrats, Shira? Well, it's, that's an interesting question. I don't think it hurts the Democrats to have him run, uh, challenging a Republican. Uh, I mean, but in many ways, uh, when you have a field of 20-some Democrats already running, they're constantly <laughs> challenging and running against Trump uh, all the time. So I don't know if it really helps or hurts him either way. Uh, in regards to the argument that if Weld does well, would he entice other, maybe more high-profile Republicans into the field? Well, I think there's a maximum of an anti-Trump vote out there, especially in these early primary states. Just looking at a recent poll that came out this week, uh, Trump had a favorability rating in the 80s. That's not a lot of wiggle room amongst Republican primary voters for anyone to gain traction, let alone multiple candidates to gain traction. So, Michael, Weld seems to be pitching himself as a moderate right now. Is there an opening right. for any candidate in a primary to really challenge the president? As I wrote in New Hampshire Journal, if you've been waiting for the pro-abortion, pro-illegal immigration, pro-Obama Republican, you finally have one. And the number of primary votes, because this is what people kind of forget when we get excited about something like this, the people who vote in Republican primaries are Republicans. And a lot of people may not like Republicans, but they do. And they do. they're not big on candidates who are not fans of the Republican Party. I thought it was interesting. He had a very tough time answering the question, not why did you leave the Libertarian Party after promising to stay for life and come back, but why did you leave the Republican Party? And so that is the real tough point. Mm -hmm. But there are other Republicans 
who have a track record uh, you know, as, as being solid Republicans like John Kasich of Ohio or Larry Hogan of Maryland who don't have to deal with that issue. The real question is, and I think uh, your other guest nailed it, there is no room right now for really any opposition inside the Republican Party. He has an 80% approval rating. If that doesn't change, this is all just a conversation. Michael Graham, Shira Center, thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.